Hi, Terry Van Noy. Welcome to Math Class with Terry V. Hope this video helps you out, and if you enjoy it, please share it, comment, or like it. And you can also go to my website, mathpowerline.com. It's a math resource blog, uh, lesson videos for students, and other resources for parents and teachers. Give me a call, or go to my website or email. All right, let's go to today's lesson. All right, in this video, this lesson is about graphing the absolute value function or equation. So the parent function, the starting um, point that we're going to have is y equals the absolute value of x. The absolute value is the positive value of whatever's inside those absolute value symbols. Okay, so obviously uh, in all these videos, I'm going to start with an xy chart. And we always start with created values for x ourselves. Let's go ahead and just make up some values here. So let's start with uh, x equals negative 3. We're going to substitute that in there and try to do most of this in our head. What is the absolute value of negative 3? How far away is that from 0? Well, positive 3 units. In fact, whatever's inside here is always a positive unit. Absolute value of negative 2, absolute value of negative 1, absolute value of 0. How far is 0 from 0? Yep no units away. Absolute value of positive 1 is still positive 1. Absolute value of 2 is 2 and so on. Now you'll see kind of a, a logical pattern here but let's go ahead and graph these uh, ordered pairs. Negative 3, positive 3. When we're back 3 on the x-axis we're going to go up 3 here. Go ahead and put your dot there. Negative 2, positive 2, negative 1, positive 1, 0, 0, and then 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3. So let's go ahead and connect the dots. So our parent function of y equals the absolute value of x looks like that. Notice that there are no negative y values and that should make sense because whenever x is positive or negative the y value is always going to have to stay in a positive level. Now what we're going to do is make some quick little adjustments here. We're going to change the absolute value um, function and just add a few things to it and see what happens. We're going to kind of shift and move this graph around when we do certain things. In this case, we're going to add, well, let's go ahead and add um, 4 to this and make it a little bit more interesting. Okay, so here we're going to take the absolute value of the x value plus 4. So we're going to take absolute value of x, which is 3, and then we're going to add 4 to it. That would be 7. All right. So let's go ahead and cross that out. We're going to add 4 to all of these values. And then we're going to graph it and see what happens. See what happened to the graph. And just to finish up here, 2 plus 4 is 6. 3 plus 4 is 7. All right, let's graph that. Did your ordered pairs show up like that? Notice that we shifted from the green graph up, guess what, four units. So when we add an outside number outside of the absolute value symbols, it's an upward shift. Guess what happens when we subtract? It's gonna be a downward shift. Let's connect the dots. So there's our graph of absolute value of x plus four. Now we're just gonna change this a little bit and have the absolute value of x and kind of test out our theory. What happens if we're going to subtract on the outside? For example, minus 5. Let's go ahead and subtract 5 from the green value because that came from our original function. So 3 take away 5 is negative 2. And then 2 take away 5 is negative 3. One take away 5 is negative 4. negative 5. So a little mistake in my writing there, but these are all of our y values when we're taking the absolute value of x and subtracting 5 from it. Here are the ordered pairs. Now let's look at the graph. And now you notice that the parent function in green actually shifted down 5 because of obviously the subtraction we added to the equation. Now let's take a look at a few other things. So our parent function is in blue, and given these x values that we just create ourselves, let's go ahead and do absolute value. 
negative 3. We're going to add 2 to it, which gives you negative 1. Absolute value is positive 1. Put a negative 2 in there, that would be 0. 0 would be our y result. Put a negative 1 in there, negative 1 plus 2 is positive 1. Absolute value is 1 again. All right, what about 0 plus 2? Absolute value would be 2. 1 plus 2 would be 3. This would be 4, and that would be 5. Okay, let's go ahead and put those ordered pairs on the graph. So, notice what happened. We did a shift, but instead of to the right, it's to the left. So, if you put any kind of value inside the absolute value symbols, it's going to shift it horizontally, right or left. Notice that if we add 2, it's going to go 2 to the left. Okay, we're going to talk about why in just a second. Let's graph it. So you can see that we shifted 2 to the left from our parent function. All right, now let's look at another example. Let's try y equals the absolute value of x take away 4. So we're going to take the parent function, subtract 4 inside the absolute value. Can you predict what that's going to look like? If you have graph paper in front of you, go ahead and see if you can graph it. Um, mentally, you can do the numbers, or you can go ahead and write in the values, the y values on the xy chart. But go ahead and uh, pause, try it yourself, and then come back and take a look. All right, now what if we have the absolute value of x minus 4? We're going to take our x values, subtract 4 from it, then take the absolute value. What happens to the graph? Can you make a prediction? Let's go ahead and take a look at the values we'd get. 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0, and I bet it would start counting up again. So let's go ahead and put those ordered pairs on the graph. So there's the ordered pairs and there's my graph. Notice from the parent function in blue, everything shifted over 4 to the right. So the pattern is x minus some number, okay? So it's actually, um, if you want to think of it as a formula, in order to look at what kind of horizontal shift there is, you want to make sure that you think of it as x take away a value. Now in this case, that would be a negative 2. You're taking away a negative 2. In this case, it's a positive 4. You're going to go to the right. Okay, So you kind of have to think of an opposite operation there. Now for our final look at uh, what happens to the parent function, let's look at y equals, and let's multiply it by a constant. So let's put a 2 on the outside, 2 times the absolute value of x. All right, so we're going to take all these absolute value amounts and double them. Okay, absolute value of negative 3 is 3, double it for 6. Double that for 4. Double that for 1. Double that for 0. Double that for 1 again. Oh, whoops, excuse me, let's go 2. That would be 2, that would be 4, that would be 6. Obviously, everything would be positive. So let's put that on the graph. So there's the ordered pairs and there's the graph in gray. Now notice from the blue function to the gray function, we've got a bend. It starts to narrow a little bit. So we kind of uh, change the slope from a positive 1 and a negative 1 to a positive 2, negative 2. Obviously, that's what the multiplier effect is. Let's look at one other example. Let's do negative, though. So what about y equals negative 3 times the absolute value of x? All right, so we're going to take that. Absolute value of that is 3. Triple it. Positive 9. There's going to be a bending that happens, but what about the negative? So absolute value of negative 2 is 2, triple it, for positive 6. That's a positive 1, triple it, for positive 3. 0 is still going to be 0. 1 tripled is 3. 2 tripled is 6. 3 tripled is nine. Now this is a very common mistake I did on purpose. Let's check this out. If we're going to take the absolute value of negative three, that's going to be positive three, multiplying by three and a negative. Okay. In fact, all of these have to be a negative. 
Okay, so you want to make sure that you are really double checking your sign on these. All right, let's graph this. So in this final graph, notice how it flips upside down. That's because of this negative sign. And the 3 is a bigger number than the 2. Therefore, it's an even more extreme bend. I don't know if you can tell if the yellow graph is narrower than the gray graph. And they're both narrower than the blue original parent function. So let's summarize and finish this up. All right, when you have an absolute value equation or function, if we have something added or subtracted on the outside of these absolute value symbols, that tells us whether we're going to go up or down. Okay, that's a positive or negative shift. If this is a positive number, you're going to go up. If it's a negative number, you're going to go down, as in my first few examples. On the inside, if you are subtracting a positive number from x, then that is going to be going that way. All right? if it is so it's a right shift a left shift would be if this is a negative number so x take away a negative it'll look like x plus something in other words you got to really be careful about this subtraction idea in here so we have an up and down shift possible we have a right left shift possible and then we have a multiplier effect all right if it's positive then you're going to bend it a little closer in. All right, if it's negative, then it actually flips upside down with the bend depending on the number. All right, so look for another video where we kind of test this out a little bit, and you should be able to make these predictions without creating an XY chart and graph for each of these. All right, good luck. All right, there you have it. I invite you to go to my website now, mathpowerline.com, or email me or give me a call. The way I work best with students is live online in my classroom. So if I can help you in any way, answer some specific questions, the first lesson with me is free as I show you how everything works. All right, study hard and take care.